Hello everybody, this is Major 7! First thing, why? Why? In the last video, I said this is to give you a new song every Tuesday and uh, the analysis following on Friday. And when I tried to record that video, nothing worked the way I wanted. Thereby, this video took so much longer to make than I planned to. But anyway. Welcome to the second part of the first episode of Pills. In this video, we're talking about a song I released the last Tuesday, so if you haven't listened to it yet, just follow the link and come back here. Let's start by talking shortly about the instruments I used and your comments. At the beginning we have this uh, 1946 Roland Pre Piano, which I absolutely adore. It's got that spookiness that fits perfectly with the mood I wanted for the beginning of this song. It kind of reminds me of some horror movies uh, soundtracks uh, such as uh, Tubular Bells uh, by Mike Oldfield or... Uh, <laughs> the moment I started talking about an Italian band I switched to my R sound from my Italian. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Profondo Rosso by Goblin is the other song that I was thinking about. In fact, one of the comments by my man Thomas Dad was and I quote, I enjoyed the slow build up to the main part of the song, it's got a nice smooth yet not relaxing feel to it, it was sort of scary actually, if played to the right scene, I'd definitely listen to this in my spare time. Thanks Thomas for your comments, I completely agree with you. The sound then gradually switches to this electric piano, a Wurlitzer, actually going from left to right. <laughs> That goes on for the entire song until it fades again in the pre-piano towards the end of the song. About this left to right thing we've got a, a comment by Epsilus Music that says This is such a cool idea, I also loved the song. If I'm allowed to be picky the asymmetry of the stereo image kind of threw me off, but that's just personal taste I guess. Other than that it is a really great song, very calming. Thanks a lot Epsilus Music! <laughs> This happens every time. I already answered to him and I do understand what he means. So one of the things I'm trying to do to fix this song is to correct this asymmetry. We then move to the drums. We've got an 808 style drum machine going on. What I basically did was creating a build up, adding one element on top of the other until reaching the climax where the drums actually disappear, leaving room to the piano and voice alone. We then have this really low uh, synth playing a bass basically that follows the same pattern as the kick and it goes this way. It's also kind of traveling from right to left. The last thing we have is the voice that is really important, I think, in this song. This is the typical important gesture, you know, important. You know, when you're talking to a person, I've got something important to tell you. We have these voices that are building chords, but also very rhythmical. And I try to figure out what chords we have here, thinking that we have this ostinato movement. It builds up. At the beginning we have only one note, then another one adds up, and then another one, and then yet another one, leaving us with these two chords alternating. The second one feels like an F minor, because it's got a, a flat, C and F in it, so it's this thing basically. At this point, the bass uh, and the piano are actually playing uh, an A flat, so it kind of feels like a minor chord by itself, but if added to the piano, it gets the quality of an A flat 6 chord. As you can hear, the second chord with the piano feels much more like a major chord. And the first one is what I'd call a... I'm not entirely sure about it. The camera turned off. 
because it was out of battery. So I took my time to cook and have dinner. So here's what I cooked. Risotto with pesce persico. That is a, a typical recipe from where I live, from Lake Como. And I was saying before, all this happened and I spent an hour cooking and eating. So when we are moving between these two chords, uh, there is no real resolution. Uh, we keep fluctuating between them. The tension is never relieved. So the feelings of uneasiness and I think also spookiness are kept alive. Over this pattern, there is the voice underlining a B Lydian scale when playing over the B bass. So with a sharp fourth, so it goes, and the mixolydian scale off and on a flat, with a flat seven, so going, uh, what we basically have is this uh, melody, reinforcing the idea that we are switching between these two modes on these two chords. Raining on the wrong side, shut the window, let the water come, flood in this room, nobody should get wet, wanna keep me dry, wanna keep me floating. Right before the drums disappear and uh, we've got a change in the harmony, the voices play these cluster. <laughs> projecting us uh, towards uh, the last part of the song with only the electric piano and the voice. After this uh, clash of voices, we've got uh, the beginning of the center, harmonically speaking at least, uh, with the bass going uh, B, B flat, A flat, G flat, E, E flat, E, E flat. And various chords arpeggiating over these bass. I spent half an hour trying to understand what the first chord was and I still don't know. So, if you want to try to give names to these chords, let's go through the piano here. chord of which I am definitely sure is the last one that is an E flat major and I also think that E flat is the key center of this uh, uh, song. I'm not a great fan of explaining what the lyrics are about so uh, I'm leaving them in the description if you want to check them out and let me know what you think about them that would be really appreciated. That was it for today I hope that you enjoyed the video damn it I have to stop touching this thing. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, do it now for more original songs and original content. Let me remind you that a fixed version of this song is coming out next Friday. Thanks for your comment and be ready for more. Bye bye, cheers by Major7.